Welcome back to the garage everybody. Um, if you watched the uh, previous video on how to uh, remove the timing chain from a quad 4 uh, without uh, worrying about bending the valves, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to put the motor uh, back in time and we're going to um, install the timing chain and tighten the bolts down and then we're going to check it to make sure that it's actually in time. That's a kind of a two-step process. Um, I made this tool here for um, for the timing sprockets, and uh, this is actually for an aftermarket one, and uh, we don't have that today. Um, we have the, the factory uh, gears on here, so uh, I'll be showing you how to how to adjust this um, and and just kind of move the gears a little bit to get the the chain to line up properly. And uh, we'll just use a little small little pry bar like this. It works really good. I've tried using the screwdriver and the tension on the valve springs is just too much. And you can't quite get enough pressure without bending the screwdriver. So I use this. It's just a little Harbor Freight deal. It actually has a cracked handle on it. It's old, but it, it serves its purpose pretty well. All right. So we have the exhaust and the intake um, cams, uh, cam gears. We have the water pump here. And we have the crank here. Now, if you remember in the other video, we, uh, we had turned this backwards away from uh, top dead center. And uh, we want to bring that back up to top dead center now. Since we have the gears installed and the, there's a locking bolt here on the, uh, on the gears, there's a, little, there's a little hole in the timing cover that these line up in. And uh, that will lock the gear so it can't turn. Now, the, the, the bolts here, they're just finger tight. Um, I usually wait until I get the timing chain on it and everything. That way everything's all tied together. Then I'll torque these down. That way instead of all the pressure being just on this bolt, it's spread throughout the timing um, the, the uh, timing system. And uh, it's also uh, puts pressure on this bolt here. So it's like two of them are locked in place as I'm tightening this one, then I'll tighten that one, and we'll be done. All right. All right. Now we've got our new timing chain. And these are always marked which is the front i don't know why exactly um you have to have uh the gears or the uh, chain facing the proper way i'm not quite sure about that but uh all the all the timing chains you'll see will have, either have a little paint mark on them or um one link will be a different color and in this case this is a cloise uh, right here it says made in usa so that's the that's the side we want to have out all right so we want to remember that whenever we put this on all right first let's bring this up to being in, being in time and again you don't want to do this while um the gears here are out of time so um now that we've locked them in i know this is safe to bring this up there's a small little mark here on the block and then we have the keyway here it has a little mark on the keyway so we're going to bring that up until we are zeroed and that is it right there and there's one thing I want to check on this bump this it's gonna go backwards a little bit that's okay I just want to check this timing gear make sure it's on properly I'm not sure this is the GM 2.4 I'm not sure if, um, if there's a mark on this which is the front which is the back and uh, no but on this on this gear the back side has a taper so if you don't see a, a timing mark up here on the gear uh, you can go by uh, this little this little taper here on the back that side will always go toward the crankshaft there's a tiny little radius back here and that keeps that from from bumping into that radius All right, so we'll slide that on and tighten this back up we're going to do this in real time, no cuts, so you can see about how long it should take. And it shouldn't take too long. I was pretty intimidated by these uh, whenever I first started working on them. I'm, I'm used to working on small block Chevys, and they are, I mean, I could do those with my eyes closed. Um, <laughs> pretty easy. But um, once you get this down, it's not too bad, actually. So we're going to turn this lining the keyway up, and that is... That's right on top dead center. So we have the keyway lined up with the mark on the block. All right, and then we're going to put our timing chain on. So we're going to make sure our Made in USA stamp is on the outside. I always like to just kind of set it in here for now like that. And we're going to bring it up around 
set it on the camshaft and then the other camshaft that's going to be close and there's going to be a little slack in that we're going to get rid of this later i'll show you how to do that that has to be pretty much straight across and then this is the water pump here I'll bring that down and that's basically like an idler pulley and we don't have any of the guides in yet we're going to wait until last to put those in and then we're going to put this on the crank and that is basically the orientation the orientation that we want now this side here looks pretty good you can see there's no slack in the chain between the crank and the cam gear but you can see there's a lot of slack here and that's what we want to get rid of and so we're going to we're going to play around with this a little bit i'll show you how to do this it's a little tricky you got to muscle it a little bit but um the idea is to turn this gear backwards slightly to try and catch that tooth sometimes i've had to move this gear sometimes i've had to move this gear today we're going to move this gear here since this is real nice and everything is uh is in sync right there all right let me switch sides all right so what we're going to do we'll pry this gear backwards slightly with the kind of it's going to be forward which we, we need to go that way so probably here and it still has that still has the bolt in but there is a little bit of play in that and that's what i'm counting on try to get out of the tooth here that's what i'm counting on to use see it will move just a little wee bit then i'm going to try to slip this over and that's what we're looking for so whenever i leave this go it'll tighten up and that is that's money that looks really really good okay so next step we're going to install our tensioner now if you remember in the other video i actually put this zip tie through this hole and through here since then i've removed it what i did is i put the a zip tie around here and then cut that one out and so our tensioner is nice and compressed now if you're if you buy a brand new one they come with a little steel u-shaped steel hook in here a little pin u-shaped pin and um, that goes in this hole and it hooks in the shoe and that'll hold it together and you can just put that in and then once you get everything in time you just pull that out this pops out a little bit and it locks everything in um, today we're not going to do that we're going to do it this way and um, the only reason we're going we're to do it this way is just to show you that there is another way in case you lose in case you lose that or something you can do it this way and on the back side it just slid the zip tie up so that the the through bolt can go through to start attaching it and we're going to snip that and then pull it out all right. all right so since we got it in time i'm going to put the, the tensioner here in place and um the one thing you have to be careful i want to show you this real quick here i hope you get this in the camera this is my new uh samsung s8 uh, S8 Plus. Um, this is my first video with it. I was using a Samsung S2 before, so hopefully the video quality will be a little bit better for you, and uh, you'll be able to see a little bit better and enjoy the video a little bit more. But um, there are 10 millimeter bolts here that hold the bottom of the timing housing on. But underneath this tensioner, this is what they call a one-piece tensioner. It's also what they call two-piece, even though it's obvious this is the shoe and this is the main body. Uh, this is considered a one piece because it's all together in the factory. The two pieces, there's actually two pieces. I prefer this because it's a lot simpler to use. I really am not a fan of the two piece um, timing tensioners. But in any case, um, where the stud would be for the two piece tensioner, there's a 13 millimeter bolt that goes underneath there. And it's actually a special bolt. It's uh, it's a little flatter um, to on the head to make make it the room for the shoe to move without it binding so we, we want to make sure we use that bolt in there and uh, i tore a junkyard motor apart one time and i found uh, it was a 13 millimeter bolt that uh, they had actually ground the head down so it was the wrong bolt but somebody who put it together knew enough to grind the head flatter so that it wouldn't wouldn't bind up the, uh, the tensioner so we're going to lift this up and we need to be on the crank spot a little bit better than that and now we're getting a little bit of slack on that side. So, I'm going to try to get that, get in there. There we go. There we go. Now we got it nice. You just kind of wiggle that a little bit. This is good. All right. Now we're going to put our tensioner in here. We're going to place it in here. There's a little pin here that goes in this hole. 
and then there's a, a port here for the oil pressure it comes out of this hole I'm just gonna slide that into place I'm gonna sit on that pin it's nice and easy and then we're going to start these bolts these are eight millimeter heads on these Oops, right here we go. Couldn't see that too well. All right, and we're just going to tighten these down a little bit. I'm not going to get them all the way tight because we do have to get that zip tie out of there. And then we just want to turn them in a few turns just so we know it's locked in. It's not going to fall out or anything or slide out and then get you know all crooked and bound up and everything. All right, now at this point, this is the time whenever I like to install the guides. So we have this guide here first. This is the long one. It's going to be on the front of the motor. A lot of people like to put lubricant on these, and um, and that's fine. Sometimes I'll put some lubricant plate on there. I really like lubricant plate. It keeps from galling. galling. And, um, and that's fine. Uh, you can do that. But um, I actually had, uh, I had some trouble one time, a long time ago and um, had some issues with the timing chain and uh, I actually started the car with the timing chain off or with the timing cover off and there is so much oil that sprays out of here as soon as you start it it just it is unbelievable the amount of oil that sprays out right right in this area and um, that's what lubricates the timing chain so I'm not really worried about it um, I cleaned the chain and everything I cleaned the guides and all that and then I just kind of wet them down with some WD-40 just uh, so the chain wouldn't get any rust or anything and um, that that's usually okay that looks good i've never had any trouble with the chain you know going or anything like that so i'm just going to pull this out and that's a nice tight fit which is a good sign it's a good chain in fact I'm bring the screwdriver. just kind of pull the chain out of the way very slightly just enough to get it started in there doesn't take much, just like that. Then the top one, we got a top one here. This one here can be a little bit tough to get in because the chain is so tight across here, which is what we want. So on this one, we're just going to pry the chain down very slightly, again, and that just slides right in. So that worked out really, really good. All right, now at this point, we're going to we're snips. We're going to cut this. And you can see that tensioner popped out just a little bit. I hope you've seen that. And we're going to pull this out. You see why I put this bolts in there. As I pull this out, this is trying to come out. There we go. That's it. We got everything off. Push that back in. There we go. And then we're going to tighten it down. Gonna tighten that till I feel it there, just tighten that, just starting to tighten up. We're gonna torque all this stuff down, torque it properly. Okay, and the timing tensioner gets torqued to 89 inch pounds. We've got our inch pound gauge ready. Check it. It's good. That's good. All right. Now at this point, what we want to do is pull the pull the bolts out, the cam gears, and they'll just they'll stay on there. They won't pop off or nothing. Because there's a there's a, a pin in front of crankshaft that's common with most motors. So I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. Definitely don't want to put red Loctite on in case we need to get it apart. We don't want to have to use the big red wrench. <laughs> Special tools. <laughs> so we're just going to put a little bit on there. I like this paste. There's a little screw, little screw thing at the bottom. Um, it seems you know, it doesn't drip around like the other stuff. And we're going to put these back in.
we're just about done. But we are going to, we are going to check it, make sure it's in time properly. And this gets torqued to uh, 52 foot pounds. Tighten that up. I already have the torque wrench all set and everything. That's what we want to hear. There we go. I'll tell you a story. One time I put a motor together and put it in the car and the lifters were bad. It was rattling. It would knock quite down. And I um, had to actually pull all of this off, pull the cams off, and put new, new lifters in it. And... Um, uh, whenever I got this apart, I had actually forgotten to torque these down. So, a blessing in disguise. Bad lifters can be a blessing in disguise. Check it. All right. Now we're ready to go. All right, now what we want to do is pull our pins out. I might have to just turn this a little bit. Just a little bit. Try and take some pressure off of those. Move it back the other way. There we go. These will slide out. Now what we want to do, we want to turn the motor over from here. Two full revolutions. The reason why you have to do two revolutions is the cams move at half the speed of the crank. So if the crank is turning 5,000 RPMs, this is only turning 2,500 and uh, if we turn it over one turn, the cams will be halfway around. If we turn it over to second turn, you'll see this locking pin hole go the whole way around. So whenever we're done with that, we should be able to put those bolts back in. They should slip in real easy. So let's give it a try. We're turning in the normal direction of rotation. And I'm also kind of feeling, if I feel any strong resistance, that might be one of the pistons touching the valve. So we're going to stop. And it all feels real smooth. That was nice and smooth. That's one. And we're going to go around again. You can see those holes are about halfway around. Oh, I'm going to switch sides on you. Right. And we're going to come up around to bring it in the top dead center. Bring that up. I'm just going to eyeball down here, lining a keyway up with the timing lock. That is it. Then we're going to take our two locking bolts. I get my eyeball on it. It actually looks good. That goes all the way in. And that goes all the way in. So we are in time. We are ready to go. Once I get the cover on this and uh, the, the damper, um, we'll be able to put the clutch system on and put the transmission on and drop it in the car. And we'll be ready to go racing. So uh, I'm looking, really looking forward to that. All right. And that shifted a little bit. Sometimes it'll shift a little bit. I'm just going to back this up a little. I'll move it forward. There we go. That side's in and out, and that side's in and out, and we are top dead center. And that is right on. I, I'm glad I got this new timing chain. You can see the shoe isn't out real far. The little piston here from the tensioner isn't out real far. And um, so this is going to run just like a new one, so I'm really happy. Well, if you enjoyed the video, um, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I would invite you to uh, subscribe. And uh, we're going to be doing some other videos uh, with the car, for my race car. And um, uh, we, may even, we may even do some racing videos. So you know, we're, hoping, we're looking forward to that. So um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. I appreciate you guys watching. And any constructive comments, you can leave them below. And uh, thanks again for watching. And uh, see you in the next video.